Hi, today I thought we'd have a look at whether the colour of the solder mask on your PCB can affect the apparent colour of the illuminated LEDs on any PCB. And where this stems from is when I was doing work on the ring light in particular, testing out some of those PCBs, some people asked if it was really important what colour PCB you chose or whether it really did need to be a black or a white PCB. And actually I didn't really know, but I did have an inkling that potentially it might affect things, particularly where a lens is used, because you can see a little bit of red in the lens there. If we move it across to this one, you can see a bit of green. And in this one, you can see a little bit of blue in the lens. So I'm quite sure we might see a little bit of difference between these three. These are just standard 0805 LEDs on these boards. And I'm expecting very minimal reflection back onto the PCB. So I don't think this will affect the colour too much. But what we're going to do is power these up and have a look at the output from these boards on the spectrometer. Now these PCBs were supplied to me by our video sponsor JLC PCB. However, I thought it was a good opportunity to take a look at all the various colours that are now available at the JLC PCB website. And most recently, they've added this nice purple colour to the array, which means that you can now get seven basic colours when you're ordering your PCB. And you can see that for the first PCB that you add to your basket up to 100 by 100 millimetres in size, the price for that is $2 no matter which colour you pick. So quite a wide range of options there available now. Combined with the various surface finishes means that for most purposes you should be able to use JLC PCB for your low cost prototyping. So if we take a closer look you can definitely see there's a bit of red around the lens here and a bit around the LED. It's not quite so apparent on the green but it's definitely still there. And then the blue because it's quite a dark colour it doesn't show up very well. Uh, but you can definitely see some blue around the outside and a bit near the LED. Now, mostly the light enters here because the LED sits quite recessed into this hole here. So most of the light coming out will be directly from the LED, but there will be some reflection. These lenses aren't 100% efficient at transmitting light from the LED straight out the front. So there will be a little bit of reflection off the back here that can enter the lens from the reflected light that's on the PCB. So I think we might see a little bit of an effect here. And with these 0805 LEDs, you can definitely see some of the color of the PCB being picked up by eye. These LEDs have a viewing angle of about 120 degrees, but there's definitely quite a bit of reflection off the board. I can see it particularly well by eye on this red PCB and on the yellow one. The others are a little bit more difficult to see, uh, but let's see if we can actually measure something with the spectrometer. So the setup is fairly straightforward. I've got my little light chamber with the fiber going off to the spectrometer and then the LED perfectly centralized. Let's take a look at what the results showed us. So first of all, we've got the XHP50 LEDs with the collimating lens, and these LEDs are based on a blue dye, so they've got a dominant peak at about 450 nanometers. And then the phosphor coating creates this really wide peak here with a peak wavelength about 560 nanometers, which is a yellowish green. 570 nanometers is that typical old school green LED color. The newer true greens are more like 530. So this is that kind of yellowish green region here. And the differences between these LEDs on these PCBs is pretty subtle. So they've all got the same peak at 450 nanometers or so. However, there is a discrepancy here at 460 nanometers. So more blue, a little bit less green and a little bit less red. And that continues all the way down in this spectrum here. And then they sort of congregate together. And then towards this peak, there's a little bit less blue, which is what you'd expect for that uh, kind of yellowish green region. And actually the peak here is in the green, a little bit less red here. And then on this way, there's very little difference. I think it's pretty much in the noise. And then we have the 0805 LEDs without any kind of lens. And by eye, it was very easy to see the difference between each of these boards. There was a lot of light being reflected off the PCB as a result of the fairly wide viewing angle of these LEDs. And that's backed up by the data here. So we see a very similar peak for each of the colors at 450, maybe 460 nanometers. But at this second peak caused by the phosphor coating, there's quite a disparity between the various colors and it's almost as you'd expect. So less blue here because that greenish yellow light is being absorbed by the blue solder mask, slightly less green. And the actual highest emitters here are the yellow PCB and the white PCB, which is just hiding behind it. However, slightly confusingly, the black PCB in this area is matching almost perfectly the red and the purple PCBs. And I did try this several times and I was getting the same result every time. So I don't quite understand that. Maybe the black dye has a little bit of fluorescence and is causing it to fluoresce in that area. Uh, 
by eye, it just looks white. It looks very similar to the white PCB, but there's just slightly less um, light being emitted in this area here by that black board. So probably nothing too surprising there, but at least we have a definitive answer now. If we are designing a PCB with some LEDs on it and we care about the colour being emitted, we should probably emit the various coloured PCBs and just go for black or a white PCB and that will maintain the correct colour being emitted from these LEDs. However, if you're not using it for those purposes, I thought this was a useful way to showcase some of the colours that you can get your PCBs made in and also the effect of having copper directly under the solder mass. So you can see this is the red PCB with copper directly underneath it and without it. So you get a much darker colour. So you could create quite a nice contrast with some of these PCBs if you wanted it to look nice. This is the yellow with and without copper underneath it. The green. And the blue. So quite a lot darker there with the blue. And the purple gives quite a nice effect as well. So quite a dark purple there. The black, you really can't tell the difference that much because these are very opaque colours and the same for the white. You can barely see the difference between each of these sides. So a fairly simple video, but hopefully a useful reference point for you PCB designers. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and until next time, thanks for watching.